Hey everybody, it's Dave from San Diego with another Site Grinder 3.5 mini tutorial. This is semi-transparent flyout panels with scrollable text. Here's an example of the look we want to achieve. You can see on this web page we have a large picture box area here on the right hand side with a rotating picture show uh, fading gracefully between images. On the left here, some actual uh, web typography thanks to 3.5's easy link to the Google font repository. Here are a couple of rollover buttons. When we click on a button, out slides a semi-transparent, semi-opaque panel. Just opaque enough to float white type across the front, just transparent enough to show a little bit of the rotating slideshow that's behind it. That's a really cool effect. It looks real uh, upscale and uh, sophisticated. Also, this is a scrolling body of type with a scroll bar over here on the right-hand side, as you'd expect to see it. We've got a close box up here. And we can open a panel, clicking another button. One comes out, one flies back in. Very clean, very cool. All right, let's figure out how to build this thing. Here is our Photoshop document, and we've got uh, some uh, layer groups here. Let's look at this first one, the common layer. There is a, starting with a browser background, this is a color overlay, which gives us black everywhere where we don't have any actual uh, content in the browser window. Here's a little panel off here on the left-hand side with some layer effects applied to it. Next up we've got a layer group that includes some text. Again this is from the Google repository. We've got room down here for maybe contact information, whatever. Next is the picture box layer. Now the main picture box in this instant, it actually contains an image and not just, for instance, a large uh, blank color area, black, white, whatever color you want. Uh, it's just a placeholder. So why did we place an image, an actual image from our slideshow in this area? Well, uh, there's an actual reason for it and uh, we'll get to that here in just a moment. Last and maybe most importantly, we have the uh, left navigation and flyout layers. Let's open that up. Here is a uh, layer group called North America. This will build the North America button and flyout layer. Let's open that up. Let's check out the button first. And you can see over here we have got a typical button. It's a little arrow jobber with some text in it. If we go over to the folder and open that up, we've got some elements in there, the button type itself, a background layer for the button type, as well as a background for the hover state and a background for the click state. This is a layer group button, so we can include, we can include all this stuff in a layer uh, that's named button. In this case, we have North America button. And that's great. Let's go downstairs here. Let's close this up. Let's look at the flyout panel. This is where most of the secret sauce is going to occur. We have four layers here. They're all hidden right now. Let's open up the first one. This is the North America panel click show. And as you can see, it has the same name, North America, as the button does over here. So when the North America button is clicked, we're going to get this flyout panel coming right at us. All right, let's get a little closer. And next up is this layer called Dark Glass North America. This is just an arbitrary name. There's no special magic in this name. There's no hint applied to it. And what it really is is just a typical Photoshop rectangle. Let me grab it here. You can see it's just a uh, rectangle filled with uh, black color. 
and it's wedged over here near the corner of the panel. Be really sure that when you put items into that panel, they don't go outside the panel. It's so important or your effects will either go wrong or not work at all. Very important. Also, next up we have the text layer here and you can see we've applied the text hint to it. It's an actual uh, real-life text layer, not just uh, rasterized text in Photoshop. And finally, we have a close button way up here at the top. A little tiny red with an X in the middle of it. All right. Now, here are some things we must do to make this work. First of all, on the click show, take your opacity down to zero percent. Zero percent opacity on the panel click show layer. Now it's going to disappear. You can see a bit of the placeholder picture box image peeking through there when that opacity went down. But it's still going to function as a panel click show even though we can't see it. It's very important. Now on the dark glass North America layer, right now it's solid black. We want to take that down to 55%. You can take it down to any percentage you want, but I have found that 55% is uh, the magic number. We'll use the arrow key, get right down to where we want to be. And as you can see, we've got a little bit now, since we brought our opacity down, we've got a little bit of the background uh, placeholder image on the picture box showing through. Looks pretty good. All right, let's build this thing and see what happens. Okay, looks like we're ready to build. Click the build button. And what do we have? Okay, naturally we have our substituted images here in SiteGrinder. There's our rollover button. That looks pretty good. But, uh, hmm, something's not quite right here. What's going on? Well, when we build this thing out, first of all, you're going to notice that the type is running off the bottom of the page. That's not what we want. Uh, so, uh, what to do? Let's uh, go back and fix this. Save and close. Let's go in here to our text layer and add the scroll hint. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and rebuild this guy. Okay. Let's see, there's our rollover. Looks like it's working. And we have our text. Uh, it's not running out the bottom of the page. And we have our scroll bar, but look what's going on here. The scroll is right hard against the side of the text. I don't like that look at all. That looks ridiculous. I want it to be over here, all the way to the right. Let's go back and fix that. Save and close. Now how are we going to do that? How are we going to push that scroll bar all the way over to the right? Here's how. When we select the text, you can see I've got layer edges turned on here. If you notice, we have a blue line around the text. I'm going to grab a corner here. 
I'm going to bring the text box all the way out to the right edge. Stop it there, making sure I don't go past the right edge. And, uh, well, that's fine and great, but uh, look what's happened here. Now the text is uh, it's, it's too big. It's jumping outside of the, uh, that dark glass container. So let's go grab the paragraph window. We're going to indent that text. And I just happen to know the right number for that happens to be 300 pixels. Let's grab all the text. How about that? And that's good. You can, of course, figure out what the proper indent is by trial and error. And let's go ahead and rebuild this. Click the Build button. And there's our rollover. Let's try clicking that. There we go. And look, our scroll bar has migrated out to the right edge. Looks more professional, uh, more like the way you would expect to see it on the web. That is great. Now you may say, well, hey, wh why, uh, why are we having this as a wipe? You notice the uh, animation effect is wipe. Well, watch what happens if we select, instead of wipe, if we select slide from the left, like you might expect it to do. The effect isn't any good. Watch. See how that scroll bar, it moves out, it slides out along with the rest of the uh, imagery? It looks kind of strange. In this particular application, a wipe from the left in this case, we'll do it for one second. A wipe is what you want to do, not a slide. And that scroll bar just seems to appear over on the far right side. Fantastic, we're looking great. One thing I want to point out to you that's very important. You've taken the opacity down on this section in back, the dark glass section. You took that down to 55%, but it's not going to, not going to appear uh, translucent unless you make sure that the dark glass is using uh, the uh, Ping24 preset, which includes, of course, that alpha channel, which will enable transparency. You also want to use it on the close button too, that little uh, red X, so that the edges of the close button are not ragged. Be sure to use ping 24 if you need transparency. That's great. Um, a final note, we have here just this one North America button, but you remember on our demo at first we had North America, South America, you could imagine more buttons. When you build more buttons, when you duplicate this, you're going to get a serious error report from PsychGrinder saying that you have overlapping uh, panels, overlapping layers. Ignore that. Yeah, they're overlapping, but because they're click show flyouts, you're only going to see one at a time. So it's, it's, a, it's a useful warning, but in this case, it's irrelevant. Um, let's go ahead and, and finally build this thing out. We'll go ahead and deploy it. Off we go. And there is our finished prototype with the actual images uh, for the picture box display. I hope this was helpful. Keep on sight grinding. Take care.